snails, guys. I know, I know. This will be an okay place to be. We're going to be in an okay place. I know. You too. You too. It is going to be an okay place to be. Oh, you're wild and vicious. I know you're wild and vicious. It's going to be all right, though. Nobody's going to ever treat you me. I primarily come in every Monday, which is Feral Cat Day, and work with the Feral Cat Program. The purpose is to lower the count of cats out in the public area. Basically what they do is they trap the cats, they bring them in. We will spay or neuter them. We do give them their rabies shots. We'll hold them overnight and then um, they can be released back out into the public area. Most of the time we'll have anywhere from 120 to maybe 146 cats. So, and that's a lot of work. Volunteers do help us because we don't have the money to pay for people to do it. I basically, when I come, I stay out on the cat patio and I observe and uh, care for the cats after they've had their surgery. She is awesome. She's always bubbly. She's, uh, she loves being here on Mondays. Um, she does a wonderful job. She's very important to us. It's very gratifying, you know. You can tell that they've had a hard life out there. Maybe what we're doing here today is going to make their life a little easier. So maybe they'll give them a, a better, longer life, a healthier life. I think it's just like anybody we see, we don't, we don't like to see pain and suffering. I don't like to see it in people and I don't like to see it in animals because it's another living thing. And I, I think some people, maybe they like cats, maybe they just don't like the idea of something starving when they have the food. I'm not a young girl, but you know, I feel that, you know, watching them in the recovery, help cleaning up after the crates carriers doing, is doing what I'm capable of doing, you know. I always think people who don't like cats never had a great cat. My favorite cats, oh, I, I don't know, as you, soon as you think you, you, you wouldn't, like when you see one that you've never seen before, you know? Sometimes I think their heads don't match their bodies. <laughs> you know, their coloring is so different. I think they know when you like them and when you'll be kind to them. I think that they have a, a, an innate sense of things. They have great personalities. They, they're entertaining. They're not as near as much work as a dog. Um, you know, they're with you every day. They're faithful to you. Now they're nibby and they have a mind of their own, you know, but if, if you have a cat in your house, and I've had one who passed away for 15 years, you know, I you know, and, it, and he, he was a joy. I have one now, it was a retirement gift from my sister, and we adopted her from an animal shelter in Ohio, and she's crippled in her right front leg. My sister said, which one do you want? I said, let's take the cripple, nobody else will ever want her, you know. And she's fine, she's just great. Cheryl and three of our volunteers um, made some handmade purses and some frames and stuff. They're, they're darting little tote bags so you can use them for purses or lunch bags. I love the cows, don't you? So they went to a fundraiser today to raise some money for the program because they're wanting to help us get a new van for TNBR. Basically, this is one, it's kind of cute. You could use this for a lunch bag carry it as a purse, put your pet things in it. You could put your makeup, your comb and brush and hang it on your bathroom door. There's just endless things you can do with these cute little bags. We support TNR or trap, neuter and return programs for cats because we do have a large unowned free roaming population of cats. Now that it's overpopulated and hasn't been controlled, people are noticing the difference and seeing more feral cats outside and free roamers. So, and they say they're a nuisance and they're killing wildlife. The idea of capturing them and mass euthanizing them is a practical impossibility. It's politically unacceptable. That doesn't work. And why would you, why would you want to round them up and euthanize them if you can control them by spay and neuter?
I, I don't know how anybody could feel real good about that. Because they'll never kill them all. There'll always be more, so it'll be an ongoing euthanasia program. I don't know what gave us the right to think that we own everything and this, nothing belongs to those cats because they don't pay taxes or vote. I mean, what's our criteria here, you know? So the way to try to manage the population and to reduce it over time is to trap them humanely, neuter or spay them, and then return them to their colonies. That's a way to actively reduce the total population in a humane way, and it taps into the sentiment that exists in every community to have cat lovers who will do it. We know that it works. It's been proven that it works. We have numbers that show from the beginning that this program started to now, and there has been a big change. The notion that somehow someone's going to trap all of these millions of cats and euthanize them, it's not going to happen. It would be unacceptable to the public. It would be impossible to execute. So the TNR program is really the only practical way to deal with this problem, and that's why we support it so enthusiastically. Well, I wouldn't try to convince anybody to be a cat lover, but to understand and support programs for cats. If you don't like the cats, then quit complaining and do something about it. I think that the whole process is, is if you have something to give back, give it back. And that's volunteering, you know? I mean, if you can't volunteer and you have a lot of money, give it some of it, you know? But if you have the energy and the interest, then give something back, you know, don't. And, you know, I think that for most volunteers, it's not um, external praise, it's self-satisfaction that you get that you did something worthwhile. There are millions of people who volunteer for animals. I mean, there are a limited number of people who are full-time staff, but the vast majority of work that goes on is done by volunteers, cleaning cages, walking dogs, um, spreading uh, the message about protecting animals, adoption, spay and neuter, and then even more broadly advocating for farm animals, advocating for animals at risk in all sorts of situations. And it's part of the character of our country to be involved in nonprofit organizations to do philanthropic work, and volunteerism is a big part of that. So if you have the time and the energy and you want to do something to help animals and maybe better serve your community, this is just one of many places you can go, but it's a great place.